What up, what up, Van Patten here. Randy, that is, the Patten of Vans. Um, <laughs> Vansdrumming.com, that is. And uh, check it out, it's been a while, man. Uh, all of you folks out there, and um, uh, I believe it's been about three years ago, uh, I, I did a uh, video, which is a little different than my normal videos, wrapping a drum set. I had a D-drum drum kit that I wrapped uh, in this nice beer bottle looking green uh, wrap from Bum Rap Drum Company. Um, and if you recall, it was a, a single drum. I demonstrated a long video on exactly how to wrap it. And at the time, I, uh, I think it was a six piece kit. It was a two up, uh, two down um, with a snare drum as well. 22 inch bass by 20, 22 by 20 bass. And um, so it's been a great kit. The wrap has held up phenomenally. We've done a bunch of gigs with it. Uh, I use it for a lot of benefit shows. It gets beat on by other drummers, and I don't have one blemish on it. It's been outside in the heat. It stuff's amazing. So, um, Bum Rap Drum Company, really cool company. And so, when it came down to my son saying, "Dad, I want a real double bass drum set. I don't. I want to see what it feels like to actually play two bass drums instead of the double pedal and so on." I'm like, "Wow, well, man! I gotta hunt down another bass drum to match the exact one. You know, I want to have some botched up kit. You know, so." I wanted the, the green kit to be identical. It was a uh, D-Drum Diablo, I believe. So, um, you know, it's a great kit for my younger kids to play on. It's a, you know, nice solid drum kit from D-Drum. Uh, um, but I couldn't find a bass drum. So I'm looking online. I even talked to Felix over at D-Drum. And uh, they didn't have any sitting on a shelf anywhere. Um, so I found Music Go Round, looking online uh, up in uh, Troy, Michigan, actually had one sitting on their floor. Not a whole kit, just the bass drum. So I'm like, bam, ship it to me. So I got it. And uh, so my young lad's birthday is uh, next week. It's not young anymore. But uh, so I thought, heck, I'll give it to him, you know, rewrap it, get it to him for his birthday. Uh, long story short, but here I am. But don't tell him, of course. So uh, the only reason I'm shooting another video is because when I did the last one, I said, when you do a bass drum, it, it takes more than one person to get this thing really tight. Unless you have a machine, like you're rolling it on like the pros do. I don't do drum wraps for a living. This is my second bass drum in lifetime ever doing in my life. So um, again, I, I went ahead and pulled the uh, old wrap off. It was a solid black color. Um, what I had to do in, in order to do, and do that was, they had a little bit of adhesive on, on the side here, and they also had one run across where the, 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 the actual wrap started from. So I took my trusty hair dryer, yeah, and uh, my wife's, she's probably cursing me now that she doesn't have it, but, um, uh, and just heated the edges uh, where, where it crossed over enough that I could peel it back. And then as I was peeling, I was heating down the side here, which I realized that there was some adhesive on here as well. So I peeled all the black off. One challenge I came up with, and you may find if you do this yourself, this is going to roll right off here, hey, is the, um, this is the part of the black wrap as we're coming off. Some of it broke, some of it came out in big pieces, but it started peeling back a thin, thin layer of my wood. So I was like, okay, that's not good. <laughs> and it rhymes with wood. But I was like, so let me see what I can do about that. So all I, I kind of, I, I was careful and used more of the, the hair dryer, really worked it. So it's not bad, it, a couple spots this happened to, like this spot and like two little spots. And as you, you can probably see here where I had to patch uh, that right there. So, um, wow, it all lines up perfectly. Imagine that, so maybe. So anyway, so I went ahead and uh, went to the hardware store and bought some fancy, wood filler eh, eh, and a plastic putty knife cost me about three bucks for this and of course some wood glue and you know we're not sponsored by elmer's or anything anyway so uh the wood glue is because one of the sections was just peeled up a little bit and i was like i don't want to rip it off and have to sit here and putty the whole dang drum so i just stuck it back down with some clamps and i'll show you a photo of that eh, nice photo and so then I just, all I did is just let it dry overnight. And it was, uh, I only put a thin coat on of the wood filler. And I grabbed the trusty, simple, this is 120 grit paper. And just, just got it, it's just enough that it's, it's smooth. So, I mean, you're not staining this or, or finishing this with anything other than this wrap. So you just don't want to have big bumps and, and, and divots in the actual uh, wrap, you know, when you want to touch it. This is nice and thick. I, I wish you guys could reach through the screen and touch it. But uh, it's really thick. But again, if I had that section that wasn't filled, you probably would have been able to push on it. And it, it why, why leave it that way? We don't want shoddy workmanship. So anyway, so uh, before I get started, I need to find a helper. So I'm going to step away and find myself someone 
here. They will volunteer to give me a hand. So we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, welcome back. Here you go, I got my trusty assistant, Mike, here. Say hi, Mike. Hello. Okay, so we're just gonna dust off the uh, drum a little bit with some, <coughs> yeah, I should've probably done this before, or blown it off with some compressed air, but that's okay. It's not too bad. We're not putting glue right on the drum anywhere. In fact, the only, um, there's only one spot where, if you remember the last video, or if you're new to watching these, there's only one line of adhesive tape. Like, this goes up and just sits there, and uh, I clamp it down, so we work it that way. And then when this other side comes over and tapes to it, that's the only, the only adhesive. And then um, once we start putting lugs in all these holes around the drum, that's when it really adheres the, 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 uh, the wrap. The big challenge you have is making sure that once it's all wrapped on, that between these lugs and the next lugs, you don't have any bubbles. Like, it's just popping. And, and, so that's why you're gonna see, we're gonna let it roll. Uh, Mike and I roll this thing and try to get it as tight as we possibly can and most likely have to re-roll it again or again because if it gets a little off-centered, you, you wanna make sure that it's exactly centered on both sides here. So luckily the, the folks at Bum Rap Drum Company did cut this precisely for this size bass drum and it's the exact size to just overlap enough that uh, I'll cross this lug. So once I put the lugs on, It'll go through this layer as well as that layer when it goes over. Eh? Eh? Pretty fancy, huh? And this is the bottom of the bass drum. The top of my bass drum is, uh, well, up here. So anyway, so this way it'll be underneath. You don't ever see the seam anyway. Um, but so all the wraps, whether you do the smaller drums or any of the drums, always make sure you're trying to cross over a lug so that it helps really make sure it's, it's staying on, which it should. So we're going to start out. We, we bought four of these fancy clamps. We have, so uh, we have four of them, and what I'm going to do is just try to get a starting point here that looks like we're about to space properly and kind of across this line. And Mike and I are going to finagle this thing and just let it, let it hang. Now, because there's no glue on here, you're really going to trust the clamp's going to hold this thing somewhat tight. It's not very snug, is it? But, and then we're just going to slowly just work our way down the drum and just roll it. And, and like I said, most likely we'll have to do this again because you really want to make sure this thing is snug and it's not too bad. See, it's already moving on me. It's really depressing. And then if you rub your hands on it, you feel anything, anything bump underneath, like uh, maybe you had some little blemish or some dust. If, you've really, if it's bothering you, then grab your sandpaper out and, and buff it down. But uh, because this is a nice thick wrap, you really don't feel anything. It's, it's pretty darn nice. Um, I may have to put another clamp up here, something to hold this to give us a little extra oomph. Or maybe I get a piece of, um, piece of tape or something on it. Let's see how it works. So we're pretty lined up. So far pretty smooth, right Mike? You already know bubbles down there? We'll roll a little bit more and see what happens. And the idea is getting it as tight as possible on here. It's actually looking pretty good. We might just do this in one shot. We're professionals now, second time around. And roll it and just, again, I'm, Mike, I'm putting your finger on this top edge on one side, somewhere there, and just, this way you can really, like, smooth this down, you know? Because we don't want any, any little weird rift, little bubbly things. Now, the problem is, not a problem, but, uh... How's your spacing over there? I'm pretty good, actually. I'm starting to kick, actually, this way. Yeah, see, so you're getting a little wider here. So that's where you got to kind of shift it, like... Now, now we're back again. And that's what happens there if, if, for instance, it starts shifting off one way and then you try to pull it back like a hair back this way, by doing that, just pulling it back a hair, all of a sudden I'm going to have a little pocket up here. So you really got to like, ah, so you, you, you might fix a solution, find a solution here, but make sure you come back and go, okay, it's bubbling up here. So I'm, I'm kind of too far that way here, so I'm going to pull it back. There we go. And again, it's looking really nice. Feeling pretty good about it. How are you doing over there? Good? I'm good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, take these clips and slide them down this past there, Mike, maybe. Slide just slide this that one down. And then we've got two more of these bad boys. Here. Just temporarily set it there up here. So that we can then just yeah, but really do it again, yeah. Okay, good. Now let's roll this whole thing this way. 
keep going. So, so now we need to, we're obviously you gotta work this thing. So you can see that it's uh, doing what it's supposed to. You just really want it to be exact and really want it to be precise on here because once you peel off this tape on here, once you peel that double side tape underneath this layer and you put it down, that's it. There's, I don't believe there's going to be any, ooh, I want to redo that. It's done. I'm, I'm actually lined up pretty well. I mean, the nice thing is, I mean, if you're, say you're a quarter of an inch here and you're a smidge under that here, like, you know, uh, whatever. You, your, your rim is going to cover it, your uh, head is going to cover it, so it's not going to see it. What you don't want to have happen is have the whole thing be cockeyed kind of, you know, so that's where it looks funky. But I don't know. I almost want to... Uh, just take it, Mike, and it's really just like flattening at it. Yeah, it's not got to go. Because I'm, I'm exactly square, like it's lining up square here. Is it square there? Yeah. How's our space here? See, you're, you look closer. Looks a little bit off. See, look at here. You're a little closer yeah, there. Yeah. Now, uh, what we can do is, on both sides, put your thumbs on it and try to slide off yeah. to the right here. Like, you might have to work it. Just a smidge. Like, don't go far, though. See, that might have done it. Still and then right. do it at the bottom, too. And as long as you look about square on both sides, then we'll do the same little push. Okay. And that would sound silly, but we're kind of figuring this out on our own, too. So, just find a buddy and have some fun. Um, See, I look like I'm. Oh, there we go. Huh? Eh, huh? Eh, I don't know. It feels pretty good to me. You see any bumps or anything funky there? Notice we're on a piece of cardboard, too. Get a piece of carpet or a towel or something. Don't do it on a rough surface because you don't want it. We're sitting here working this thing. You don't want to scrape it up, obviously. That would be a shame. All right, so are we done? We got it? We're going to just do this thing? Let's do it. Um, you don't see any bubbling anywhere, right? All right, one last. All right, so I'm going to pull this clamp back just a hair and then put your hand on there and I'm going to peel this up. We're sure we're there, we're good, right? All the way around. Double, double check, make sure you're happy with this. <laughs> and your reader. Yeah. See, that's what I, you're just making sure there's no, anywhere where any, anything's bubbling up. Now, clearly it's going to do it right here. Right. But anywhere else, like, really look at it. Yeah, I think we're good. It's going to bubble there for a second. When we put this down, we'll just work it. So, why don't you come on the front side, Mike, and we'll do like this. Pick, just pick it up with your one, pick your hand maybe here, okay. so that you're getting pressure on it, and pick that up enough that if we think we're good, I'm going to, we're going to do this thing. Ready? Yeah. Let's start here. Don't stick your fingers on the, on the uh, adhesive part either. I believe that would probably be a bad thing. Again, don't let it touch the surface till you're ready to let it touch the surface. All right, here we go. All right, we're snug, right? This is pushed up as good as you're going to get. I'm going to start on my end, Mike, okay. and work it down towards you. Okay. I'm square there. Ah, see, see, I'm feeling a bubble right there. Does it feel bubbly right there? Feel bubbly? Right, hold on, hold on. And I, uh, I said you can't do this, but I want to look at the hair right there. Keep, it, keep it, that up right there for a second. Uh, it's felt like. Okay. I think we're good. Let her go. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, you're, you might have a teeny, teeny bit of play in it, but once it's which is there? I think we're I think we're good. I wasn't about to peel the whole thing back up again. I'm square here. I'm square here, right? So, I mean, to do this around the edge. You don't see anything bubbling and airy, right? Yeah. So, 
So now I'm going to put a clamp right on that seam and then put one on the other side. And then what we could do is um, Mike and I are going to take a, a, an X-Acto knife. Don't cut yourself, Mike. I don't have workman's comp. Do you feel safe with an X-Acto knife? Sure you do. Which one do you like? The big one, sure. So without poking your finger, we're gonna, I'll get a close-up of this too, but we're going to go just in the bottom and just put a, put a little pop at the top there. Right where you can see, you see it right there pop through? And do that for both holes. Don't poke yourself. Make sure you're inside of the hole. You in? Yeah, you're right. That's all. Let's see if you can find it. You got both holes? Dang. <laughs> well, this is what happens when you use Akano knives. Anyway. So just enough that you can get a little bit of a pop on there. Okay, right, cool. So we'll roll it towards the camera a little bit. And then Mike and I are just going to take and poke back into the exacto knife. You go straight like this, and I usually just make it straight in. Just dip it right in. It'll go right in all the way, as far as it'll go. And then what you do is you work it away. Just work the hole. Kind of work it around. It doesn't have to be perfect, because the nice thing about this is once we put our lug on there, you're never going to ever see this. It's just a... A hole for the lug. You don't want to obviously go past it and mess it up because that could be bad. Like that. It doesn't have to be a perfect hole. As long as I can get, and then once you get it out, you just do one of these little zip zip zip. Yeah. Perfect. Do a little spin. That's it. And little chards are going to fly somewhere, and you'll have to vacuum them up later, or you'll be in trouble by somebody. So now I have two little holes there. Set my knife on the inside. Get a trusty lug. Of course, hopefully you've already polished these up so that you know they're nice and clean and shiny. If yours are chrome, and uh, if you have a washer, I mean, have washers. Keep them on the inside. If you have the little rubber gasket, keep that on the lug. Um, and just take your time. There's no rush. It's not going to come apart now. But the idea here is if we, Mike and I, can put a lug on one side here, two lugs, and then we go to the other side, put two lugs, and then we'll go uh, directly across from each other. At, you know, if this is at noon and six, I'll just go, you know, uh, three and nine over here, and just keep doing the lugs so that you're, you feel like this, this thing is getting really put on nice and safe. And then when Mike puts that on, if we feel like we feel like we're not um, straight with it, you can you know take it out and bore out the hole a little more. This way you have a little wiggle room. Because sometimes you put this in here. What I do is I put it in and I kind of wiggle it myself a little bit to make sure it's really in good. Yeah, it'll push right in. Maybe. And if it's not, you might have to whittle the hole out a little bit more. What does it feel? Oh, no. Yeah, see, these holes might need to go a little more, Mike. A little more. Like, almost like uh, I had to work. Let me see. I actually just almost worked the edge a little bit. Your knife might be a little thicker. Yeah, I think it's a little wider. Yeah. Just one. Yeah, work, work the edge a little bit more. And then what I do is I'll, I'll get these finger tight, take a screwdriver, snug them, but I don't go crazy tight. I want to get them just in there enough that they, there's some pressure on the actual wrap. And then uh, once all the lugs are done, I'll go back in and really crank them down really tight so they don't jiggle out while we're thumping on our bass drum, of course. That should be good. Mike. So I'm not going to make this video a nine-hour video by showing us do every single lug, but what I will do is... Um, Tighten up the shot and have Mike and I do one more lug, and we'll probably feel good about it. So, like I said, much easier when you have a helper. You could obviously do this by yourself, but you can see where the challenges to come. And then it, once you stick it down, if you're off, you're all you're gonna do is be mad at yourself. So, see if you can find somebody to give you a quick hand. 
Any questions? <laughs> anyway, so um, bottom line is I'm going to tell you this now while Bike's tightening that up is that uh, if you check out Bum Rap Drum Company, they have samples galore on there. They have 100% uh, guarantee that you're going to be satisfied with this product. They also have all kinds of stuff. Again, I'm not getting paid a dime to do this, but they did offer me to uh, tell you all this wonderful thing. Since you're watching this video, if you call them up or go online or email them or do whatever you're going to do, tell them V-A-N-Z, Vans 10. Vans 10 is a code, and they're going to hook you up with 10% off. So Vans 10, you'll get a 10% off deal on any drum wrap. So I'm guessing you could wrap your whole kit into 10% off, which is pretty awesome. So uh, let's pick it up and just swivel it, Mike, so we can land uh, up here and then do these right here. Cool. You want to use a thinner one this time? I'll try this again. Okay. This way. Okay. So, so pop a hole in the bottom. Don't cut your finger off. Just to find your mark. Oh, hold on. I'm going to zoom in right there so we can work. Hold on one second. All right. So we'll cut these bad boys out. Like I do, like little, like uh, I'll do like just little pushes to work my way around the hole, you know. Imagine doing a whole drum set of these. A whole drum set takes you some time. So what you do is you, you 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 get the main wrap on. Maybe you have somebody help you get that on, and then you sit there and each evening do one or whatever. If you're not in a rush, but or sit there and just bust them out. But it's kind of a fun project to do if you have a kid to do it with. Like uh, my son and I did all the other drums, and uh, we just spent a little bit of time having some fun with it. But this is a gift, so he can't help me. And normally we're not working a, like this, on our tippy toes, but this is the only tabletop I had available today. So I'll probably finish this in my drum vault this evening. So the rest of this video, you may see a different atmosphere, surroundings, and so on. But again, check out... Uh, well, of course, check out vansdrumming.com. You can buy DVDs and all kinds of fun stuff there. You also can go to Vimeo now and look Vans Drumming up, and I'll put a link on the, uh, on the description of the video. But I've got all my DVDs downloadable, uh, rentable. It's all technology now. We ain't messing around anymore. We can, you can get it right there on your smartphone. So uh, anyway, so yeah, Vimeo uh, on demand, and it's really inexpensive. You can rent them for a couple days or do whatever you want to do. You can do a la carte, just a couple lessons, whatever floats your boat, um, as well as uh, go to the website and still purchase the DVD. So, so once it goes in, it's like, almost like it feels snug. It locks right in there nice. And like I said, if it's crooked, bore the hole out a little bit more, and you can do some more with it. We'll just put these last lugs on, and then I'll check back with you later on with this video. Kind of a pain, but it's, I tried using a I tried using a little drill, and I did it on one hole, and eh, it, it'll it'll just make a big mess, and then you're gonna end up being unhappy with what you're doing, and so. so yeah, snug it up, and then give her a little tight with the screwdriver, and you should be good to go. That's going to wrap us up for here. We're going to finish up all these lugs, and then uh, I'll uh, come back at the end here and we'll show you the finished bass drum. So thank you so much for joining us, and uh, Mike and I are going to sign out. Okay, later. There you go. Back here in Van's vault here, uh, finish up the bass drum. Got all the lugs cut out, put them all in. Every, everyone's back in. The little breathing air holes in there. The spur legs are in here. Heads are on it, and... Uh, She's ready to rock. So uh, again, you know, other tips are just making sure that thing is super tight. I mean, I can if I really play around with it, I can maybe feel a little bit, but you know what? It's up on stage, it's rock and roll. You're not gonna know. Um, and again, just make sure you, you really clean those holes out good. Um, don't cut yourself. Yeah, safety tip for you. But uh, anyway, if I can do this thing, you can do it. So uh, maybe I'll post a picture of the whole kit all done before I. Uh, uh, get done here, but uh, it's it's pretty sweet and it matches 
After three years, they printed uh, identical colors. So these guys are great. So uh, Bum Rap Drum Company, that's bumrapdrumco.com. And uh, yeah, so there you have it. So now that my uh, the kids are set with a new fun toy, of course I had to get some new single pedals and a hi-hat bracket for it because I haven't had a double bass kit since, uh, geez, the 80s with my big lovely classic kit with double bass. But uh, So I had to go out and buy the hi-hat bracket and single pedals because all I have here in the house are a bunch of a double pedals uh, so but so now that that uh, D drums done I can set that up over here for the boys I get to come and play around my Yamaha's again so I'm uh, got a whole new set of Remo pinstripes I'm going old school with them cleaning them up taking all the heads off rims off polishing the crap out of these bad boys getting them all back together again and um, super ready to start doing something else here uh, some more some more lessons and uh, content for all of you guys but uh, anyway Thanks again for joining Vans Drumming, and uh, always, uh, the support is amazing, and I really encourage you guys to check these guys out. What's really cool uh, about the company is that not only do they cut it, you know, perfectly for you, ship it to you exact, with the perfect size to just fit your drum, but you can pretty much pick any color, and upload any file just about, of course it needs to be high res, and they'll make it for you, so that's really cool. So, and you can take an old beat up looking kit and make it look new again. You can leave the wraps actually on. I showed you that I peeled the one off just because it came off easy, but you can actually put this right over another finish. So, anyway, but uh, check out my older video that probably goes into more detail about doing the wraps uh, than this one, but I wanted to share with you guys how uh, it takes a little bit more work to do the bass drum. So, once again, if you call them or email them or go online and uh, do an order, make sure you tell them VANZ10. Vans 10, and that gives you 10% off your order. So thanks again, rock and roll, and uh, we'll see you again real soon. Later.